The iconic Nile River, on its last leg of its 6,500 kilometers journey through Africa, transforms Egypt's arid deserts into a verdant pocket of life. For thousands of years, the river determined the evolution of a great civilization and provided a source of irrigation to transform the dry area around it into lush agricultural land. 95% of Egyptians live within a few kilometers of the Nile. This narrow strip of land, which represents only 4% of the country, dissects vast expanses of deserts, home to diverse communities of people, plants and animals. Here, people and wildlife depend on the vulnerable desert resources for their survival. The plant diversity in these ecosystems provides economic service benefits such as sources of fodder, fuel wood, and traditional medicinal plants. As people escape crowded cities, more desert is being reclaimed for tourism and other developments. Changes in land use and ill-managed human activities negatively impact the availability of these services and strongly impact biodiversity, habitat availability, and contribute to climate change. Continuing availability of the desert's goods and services is contingent upon the adoption of rational land management practices. To that extent, the propagation of native plants rather than ones to be brought in from other areas, which are considered invasive, is a keystone to sustainable development. Native plants use less water and insecticides, feeds the local wildlife, are authentic in their setting, show sensitivity to the environment, and some are used as medicinal plants. Dr. Irina Springel, a Russian botanist, who graduated from Leningrad State University, dedicated a lifetime to the conservation and cultivation of Egypt's desert plants. Her PhD research work on the first cataract islands in Aswan led to the declaration of two islands as a protectorate in 1986, conserving the last remaining example of pre Danubian Nile Valley vegetation. While teaching at Aswan University, Dr. Springell with her husband Dr. Ahmed Belal established the Wali Alaki Project. This multidisciplinary research effort aimed to create a model for sustainable development on formerly arid land around the shores of Lake Nasser. In her book The Desert Garden, this noted ecologist explains the best techniques for cultivating gardens in arid areas using species indigenous to Egypt. Since the 1980s, Dr. Springell has been giving her attention to the flora of Egypt's eastern desert, a mystifying landscape where majestic mountain ranges stretch to meet the splendor of the Red Sea. Many vegetated dry riverbeds, called wadis, sustain wildlife nourished by a great variety of indigenous trees and shrubs, which have adapted to survive both long drought and violent flood by rooting themselves deeply into the Wadi Terrace. Moreover, many seeds lie dormant, for after the rains, this desert explodes with life, and the landscape blooms with a burst of color, life eager to take advantage of the rain. Acacia trees are an emblem of the Wadis of the Eastern Desert. The most abundant are Acacia radiana, with an impressive umbrella shape, on a tall trunk grows further away from the sea. Acacia tortillas, another common tree, grows close to the sea. It is short, branching from the trunk's base, and has a broad crown. Acacia trees provide fodder for Bedouins' livestock in dry years, and it is the main source of charcoal and fuel wood for cooking, and staying warm in the wintertime. The tree's gum, bark, and pods are all used in traditional medicine. It provides nesting sites for birds and is the ibex main diet as it feeds on its leaves and fruit and rest in its shade. Hyrax also feeds on its leaves, fruit and its stock of insects, lizards and bird eggs. 
These nicely shaped evergreen balanitis trees feature rounded crowns. Their foliage provides important fodder for Bedouin's livestock, while Cape hares eat its fruits. Many parts of the tree are harvested to help heal a wide range of illnesses, including diabetes, while oil production from seeds was well known since the pharaonic times. Balanitis have a special vegetative type of reproduction that allows desert plants to maintain their population in dry conditions with limited water for seed germination. They start, new plants start to grow from the buds on the roots of the mother plant. You can see here one, two, three, four. Tamarisk is a magnificent evergreen, it needs more water than most desert plants, and is mainly found in the lower part of the wadis, where rainwater is stored in the ground, for a longer time. One tamarisk species seen in the desert, is the Nile tamarisk. This bushy shrub is one of the most common plants, that grow close to the sea on very saline soils. It has been used in traditional medicine as an antiseptic, and to reduce fever. Leptodonia pyrotechnica is locally named Mark, its Latin name stems from firework in Greek, as the dry branches of this shrub, are used for making fireworks. Salvadora persica, is well known by its name the toothbrush bush. It usually grows as a shrub in the wadi. It is a densely branching bush, that collects the sediments brought by the running water, forming the huge hillocks in the wadi. Ibex occasionally feed on its flowers. I started Sabara Lodge Desert Garden only five years ago. Now there are 10 gardens with about 40 native desert species from different Egyptian locations. It is a thriving garden in this arid region, where salinity and limited fresh water supply create difficulties in the establishment of green areas. Cultivation of native salt-tolerant and drought-resistant plants helped solve such problems. There are now about 800 balanitis. Its fruits are collected, and more trees are being planted. 160 acacias from seven species give shade, and add an authentic appearance to the lodge. One can see many toothbrush bush shrubs in the gardens. It attracts many birds which feed on these fruits. We also use these beautiful berries for homemade jam. The argon palm is one of the rarest species in Egypt. Its fruits were found in the tombs of ancient Egypt. Dr. Irina and her students brought its seeds from the desert. Now you can see the fruits of my labor. At present, we have about 70 plants. This is the larger population of this extremely rare plants in all Egypt. Halfabar is an endangered plant species in Egypt due its overexploitation in the past. I saw it growing in the wild only once and dig up a few seedlings. This garden has the largest population of this rare plant in Egypt. Its oil is also used in cosmetic products. There are 300 cedar trees in the garden. It is believed to get its name from its pair of very sharp thorns that are said to have been used for the crown of thorns of Jesus Christ. Hence its Latin name, Spina Christi. The fruit even had been found in the pharaonic tombs buried with the kings and queens. Presently, it is a popular fruit and is widely sold in the markets of Upper Egypt. And this is plant Lycium shavi, which grow in the desert. It's a very drought-resistant plant. Grow as a small shrub. When the birds eat these berries and then they fly and sit on the tamarics or acacia and drop with its dropping. This seeds become germinate and now we can see it under each tree, almost the new growth of this very beautiful, nice shrub. Our pharaonic garden was established less than a year ago. 
The garden is laid out making use of different levels linking by terraces. It follows the straight lines and symmetry, predominant in the design of ancient gardens, with a fish pond as the centerpiece. Lotus and papyrus are grown in the pool. Many other authentic varieties are grown in several beds. In spring, Dr. Irina continues to collect seeds and seedlings from the wild. To plant in the gardens and stock her seed bank. Perhaps one of her great achievements. At present, seeds of 40 desert plants have been collected. And she continues to enrich this collection. Seed banking is a great way to preserve endangered species, which can be used in habitat restoration program in the future. Lack of knowledge about the natural treasures of Egypt and abusing the natural desert habitats have endangered many of the plants and animals that live in the desert because their environment is being poisoned and destroyed. To save them, we have to rediscover the natural heritage this country provides for us, learn to protect it, and bring awareness to our citizens. By growing native plant into our garden, a valuable contribution can be made to this noble goal.